Hi, and welcome to our Sally Tomato YouTube channel. This is where we enjoy bringing you tutorials and other creative videos that both teach and inspire. Today's tutorial, our GG pattern, is a petite wrist bag that fits your phone as well as your most important essentials. We're going to be using some non-woven fabrics, which actually work really well for this particular bag pattern because we're going to have raw edges. I'm also going to show you a few closure options to give style to your bag, and then the option to add a chain strap. The musical Gigi and the well-known fashion model Gigi Hadid are the inspiration for this stylish little bag. Before we begin the tutorial, be sure to purchase the pattern. You can find the pattern and all the supplies for this project on our website or request them at your local quilt shop. Remember to shop local whenever you can. The supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern, including a list of helpful notions. All right, gather all the supplies that you need, cut out all those pieces following the pattern, and remember, you can always pause the video as we progress, that way we're sewing at your pace. Are you ready to begin? Let's get to the work table. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Also take a minute to look at the helpful notions section. Installing hardware does require a few extra tools. I have just a few suggestions for choosing your fabrics. A firm fabric is going to be ideal for the structured shape of the GG wrist bag. So I have a selection here of different full leathers and a micro suede. They're a little firmer and they'll give a nice structure to the bag. And then also if you're not sure if your top stitching is going to look perfect, try to match your thread color to your fabric or slightly darker. That way the stitching will kind of blend. Texture is great because it's going to help the thread of your top stitching blend in even more. Also, it may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk or using piece labels that are printed from a free download on our website, those can also be very helpful. You can certainly choose to skip the zipper pocket, but I'm going to show you how to add the zipper pocket. We're going to fold one piece D, that's a zipper tab in half, wrong sides together, and then meet that fold to the end of the zipper end. You'll repeat this for the remaining piece D. And then at the machine, we're going to top stitch those tabs along the raw edges, holding them in place and finishing the end of the zipper. Determine which direction you'd like your zipper to close, and then with right sides up, center the long top edge of your piece C, that's the pocket piece, over the lower half of the zipper tape. About an eighth inch of the zipper tape should be visible. A quick tip, just to hold your zipper in place, add a small piece of double-sided basting tape that's going to hold the pocket to the zipper tape. and then you'll top stitch following that top pocket edge. Now with right sides together, center the unsewn edge of the zipper in from one short edge of your piece A, that will be your back piece. You can use a few pieces of paper tape or washi tape to hold the pocket in place. Now you're going to sew the zipper in place. After you stitch through it, washi tape tears away beautifully. Fold the pocket over, centering the long pocket edge in from the short piece A edge, just like I'm doing here. And then we're going to top stitch the remaining three edges of the pocket. Position template A at each end of your piece F, that's the handle piece, on the wrong side. You'll trace the curved edges of the template and then cut along the marked lines to shape each end of your handle. 
With wrong sides together, fold the long edges of piece F, that's the handle, to the center. And then beginning in from the end, top stitch an eighth inch from the folds. You'll end the stitching again before you reach the opposite end and refer to the measurements in your pattern. You're going to fold the handle wrong sides together lengthwise, aligning the fold edges and top stitch again following the previous row of top stitching. Now with right sides up, position the handle ends in from the long edges and also in from the top short end. This is opposite the pocket. You'll top stitch from each handle end and close to the shaped edges. And one design note, if you'd like, you can certainly install Chicago screws or small rivets within the top stitching on your handle. That gives a nice stylish touch. We're ready to install the closure hardware. And I'm showing you just two different locks, a flip lock and a classic turn lock, but you could certainly choose to use a small magnetic snap. That gives a very discreet closure and leaves the front of your bag nice and clean. I'm using the flip lock just as a fun option. It makes for a quick closure. So on the right side of your piece B, that's the front, install the turn half of the lock hardware centered in from one long edge. You can follow the manufacturer's instructions or watch a helpful tutorial on our YouTube channel. Top stitch one long edge of both pieces H and I. Those are going to be facing pieces with a narrow allowance. I'm adding the label back onto my piece so I don't mix the two pieces up. With wrong sides together, center piece I at the top of your piece A, covering the handle stitching and aligning the outer edges. Now with piece I right side up, top stitch from the three outer edges. And then you're going to repeat. This time we're introducing piece G and piece B, so attach piece G facing to the piece B that will be your front. All right, center piece H in from the bottom pocket end of your piece A. We need just a little space. And then wrong sides are together and top stitch piece H along the outer edges, again with a narrow allowance. And make sure that your top seam isn't catching the zippered pocket on the back. On the right side of your piece A, you're going to install the eyelet half of your lock hardware, centering just in from the short end of the back with the flap facing. Make sure the center of the hardware is positioned following the pattern. And we're ready to move on to shaping and preparing the gusset. On the wrong side of piece E, that's the gusset, you're going to mark angled lines beginning in from each corner and then angling to the outer edge along the long edges. So follow your pattern for those dimensions. You'll cut along the marked angled lines and then also mark the center along both long edges of piece E. This is the gusset that you've just shaped. With wrong sides together, center piece J, that's another smaller facing piece, on the piece E. You'll top stitch all the edges of piece J with a narrow allowance. Mark the center along each wrong side bottom edge of your piece A and piece B. That's the back and the front of the bag. Now with wrong sides together, match piece B front to the piece E gusset center marks and align the edges along that bottom edge of your piece B front. Sew the sides and bottom edge with an eighth inch seam allowance pivoting at the bottom corners. 
and I find I do like to start at the center of the bag and stitch to the top edge. Then I know that's going to be even and I'll double check the opposite side and gusset alignment and double check that those are the same and then begin from the remaining edge of my piece B and attach the gusset back down to the center marking. Now that the gusset is attached to the front, you can fold those gusset ends into the wrong side. So the fold is even with the top edge of your piece B, that's the front, and then top stitch both gusset short ends with narrower seam allowance between the side seams. You're going to repeat these steps to attach your piece A back to the gusset. I find it helpful to sew the last two seams with the front or back pieces on the top so I can see the corners where to pivot. Take your time when stitching this last seam. You have layers that want to shift, so just stitch slowly and readjust your aligned edges as needed as you sew along that last side and the bottom edge. With right sides up, position and install a connector that's centered with the top of the hardware, just down from each fold edge of the gusset. Then you're ready to attach the chain strap. Congratulations! I hope you enjoy using your new GG wrist bag. I hope this tutorial has given you some helpful tips for your next project. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer them. We encourage you to share photos of your completed projects using hashtag Sally Tomato and GG wrist bag on social media. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way you'll always know when a new video is here. Thank you for joining me today. Until our next tutorial, have a great making day.